Hi, I'm Hazel. It's Saturday today, which makes it time to sit down and catch up on the WOW news of the week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, I am ashamed to... ashamed? It's kind of harsh. I'm sorry to announce that there's no Dragonflight launch date yet. I would love to be able to tell you that, but I don't know, and I don't know when we're going to know. It feels like it has to be soon. I would expect us to hear something about when we can expect pre-patch and actual Dragonflight launch hopefully soon, but until then, it's a great time to finish up the rest of your End of Shadowlands goals, work on that Slime Cat mount, Head of the Curve mount, Keystone Master mount, all that good stuff. In Dragonflight development notes, the devs have posted to say that they are moving on from like class design into tuning and bug fixes. Um, they're going to keep an eye on things and make changes as needed throughout the expansion like they normally do, but for Dragonflight beta, they're done with major functional class changes to the trees now. How you feel about that depends on how you feel about the current iteration of your class tree. They look generally fine to me, but I'm not an expert in every class and I'm generally pretty easygoing. Other Dragonflight news, really exciting news for people like me that like to collect stuff, they have re-re-updated the mount reward for the 500 mount collecting meta achievement. So at first it was like a yeti, and we didn't like that. And then it was an otter, and we liked that a little bit better. And now it's gone from being a ground mount recolored otter to a brand new soul-shaped style otter mount that can fly. I guess brand new is a stretch. It's still a recolored otter, but it's a much more fantastically recolored otter that is more unique and having it be able to fly is a pretty huge thing for the amount that you get for collecting 500 unique mounts, you know? So that's what it looks like. If you have 500 mounts that are usable on a given character, you should get that with the Dragonflight pre-patch whenever that happens. The mount specials and idle animations for these are fantastic, and I think it's really cute to have one swimming through the air. Other big Dragonflight beta news, the Evoker healing range has been updated from 25 Five yards to 30 yards after outcry from the community. A lot of people were, were speculating that Preservation Evoker, like the healing one, was going to feel just really, really limited because of that 25 yard healing range, particularly in groups where maybe people don't want to stand by you and just kind of flit off in their own directions. Um, Evoker does have a lot of mobility tools to help you move around and get within range of people, but having an extra five yards of range on your abilities is going to make a difference. There's also a couple other changes noted in this post that should shore up some other difficulties, but altogether, looking like good news for Preservation Evoker. Speaking of raiding, the raid test schedule for Vault of the Incarnates, which is the first raid of Dragonflight, has been announced. They're going to start raid testing and they're going to start doing it soon. It's basically like Thursdays and Fridays for a couple of weeks starting next week. This is bad news if you wanted to raid test and you also wanted to like go really hard on the Wrath of the Lich King Classic launch that's happening next week because I guess you're going to be busy, but it's good news for me because it means that I can get in there. I wasn't planning on playing much Wrath anyways. I can get some raid testing footage, uh, get started on some Vault of the Incarnate's boss guides, and the noteworthy news tidbit from this post is that the final boss, the last boss, will not be tested. So I was wondering whether or not we would get to see any of the bosses in testing. They talked about how they kind of liked the experiment they did with Sepulchre, where they didn't publicly test the last couple of bosses so that everybody could kind of discover them at once without guides on live servers. And it looks like they're doing that again, but just for the last boss. I think that should make for a more exciting race to world first to watch. And it means that once again, my final raid guide will be late, but hopefully not as late as last time. We'll see. <laughs> In Live Shadowlands this week, Brewfest is here until October the 6th, so go ahead and check your collections for any Brewfest collectibles that you're missing out on. There's some pets, toys, mounts, etc. There is also a 300% Ember Court rep buff available, so if you are working on your Ember Court for one reason or another, do not skip that. I believe it should just be inside of your Ember Court. I don't think you have to do anything special out at Brewfest to get that. And then in my life this week, I got lucky and made some excellent progress in my end of Shadowlands collecting. I finally got the Crimson Dreadwing Pup Bat Pet to drop after 3,850 kills out in Revendreth on stream with like the mountains all around and the big bald eagles and hey I got the pet! Woo! -hoo! And then later on I also finished my avowed rep grind also with an on stream group in roughly three sittings of a couple hours each so really not as bad as I thought it had been. I had put off the avowed for a long time because I thought it was gonna suck and it only a little bit sucked. Um, do yourself a favor, and if you're still working on that one, either join or start a group to do the Inquisitor farm because it's dramatically faster than any other method. And then out in the real world, on this week's fishing trip, I failed to catch anything on my fly rod, but I succeeded in falling into the lake. I will be taking no questions on this matter. And then viewer questions of the week, Triskelion wants to know, considering how quickly we'll be able to travel across the Dragon Isles with dragon riding, will we need to keep engineering as a profession to use a wormhole generator like we did in Shadowlands, or will we be able to switch it out for something else? So that's a personal call, but I am super dropping engineering. 
Uh, Shadowlands, I feel like, was uniquely wormhole required, I guess, just because not only were the zones really big, but they were disconnected by like a portal situation. Like you had to go through a flight path if you wanted to get to the zones. You couldn't just fly from one to the other. So having a wormhole in Shadowlands meant that you didn't have to go all the way back to Oribos and then all the way out again, even if it was just on a flight path. Now, engineers are still going to get lots of neat stuff, so I don't think it's the death of engineering or anything, but I do think that the days of every single alt having engineering are hopefully over. Then Mary wants to know, do you know if Grateful Offerings are going to be account-wide with Dragonflight? They will not be, but Anima can be sent around account-wide, and the cosmetics that you buy with Grateful Offerings and Anima are also account-wide, so what you can do is you can send all of your Anima to the character that has the most offerings, buy as much as you can, and then take the rest of the Anima and send it to your next character that has offerings, buy as much as you can, etc, etc. That's my plan. I figure I'm going to start with the back pieces and then the weapons, because those are my favorite pieces of the Shadowlands Covenant mock. And then Nick wants to know, is it safe to assume that the PvP appearances are coming back as ensembles and arsenals for Shadowlands, although they make it look like this is your last chance to grab them? So I have not seen them personally on a vendor myself, but it is a pretty safe assumption that at least the the honor and the conquest, the basic conquest appearances will come back as arsenals. The one that's going away is the elite recolor that is locked behind rated arena rating. That appearance is specific. You have to earn it within a season or else it goes away forever. But yeah, the honor set and then the base unrated conquest appearance sets are probably going to come back just because they generally put those in a vendor at some point. And that has been the week. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I've got some Dragonflight date news coming up soon. I'm keeping a lookout. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Oh, I got my glint. Oh, I finished that one. I can check that off my list. <laughs> I'm going to record now. That's the next one I get to check off. I'm pretending I'm in school. <laughs>